Hey what's up guys, Hobson Plays here and welcome to a tutorial on the iron farm that I've been using in my survival playthrough. Um, this iron farm doubles as a trading hall so you get lots of iron drops as well as the ability to trade with villagers in whatever fashion you want. In my world here I've got some farmer villagers and some librarians and I've actually already taken out all my iron but you can see you get quite a few drops, lots of roses, string from cats and like I said, this was half full of iron, so you do get quite a bit of iron. Let's head over to a creative world and I will show you how it's done. Okay, so we're here in a creative world. This is kind of the bird's eye view of the farm. To simplify things, iron golems will spawn up here and get pushed by the water down into this lava stream right here. When iron golems get killed, they have a chance to drop various numbers of iron and roses. As you can see here, I've had a few spawn in and they're dropping iron and roses for us. To get iron golems to spawn, you need to have 20 beds, 10 villagers, and 75% of those villagers have to be working at workstations. So here with this design, we have actually 12 villagers, 20 beds, and all of them will be working. In this tutorial, I'm going to put them all as librarians because that's probably what you're going to want, but you could use whatever workstations you want. There is a slight downfall with this design. I never bothered to do something for the cats that spawn but you can use them to deter creepers if you want I guess. I'm gonna put a materials list in the description. It'll be just an estimated count. You can kind of decide on different blocks. Um, obviously I use stone bricks, cobblestone stairs, and glass here but you can really use kind of whatever you want. One last thing to note, in order for villagers to sync with their beds properly you must make sure that you are 100 blocks away minimum from any other beds. So in order for us to build even just this tutorial, you can see I'm quite far away from all of my other stuff. So we're gonna find another space to do this and I'll start building. This is probably far enough away. I am very particular about having a floor a certain way. So this tutorial is gonna include the blocks for a floor. So if you don't want to make a floor and just wanna use the ground, just remember that the space is 20 blocks by 20 blocks. So to start things off, let's pick a center of four. Now we're going to put some hoppers down, have them all lead into one hopper and dig down and you're going to put a chest down here. All of the drops from your iron golems are going to be collected in these hoppers and go into this chest. I'll leave it up to you to decide what you do with storage after this though. Okay, fill your hole back in, and like I said, it's a 20 by 20 block floor, so I'm going to install mine as polished diorite, so that'll be actually 10 blocks from center, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and you're going to do that in all four directions and fill in those areas. Okay, once you have your floor figured out, I suggest you dig a tunnel down towards where your iron is being sorted. That way you have at least quick access for now to decide what you're going to do for item storage. Now we can go to the middle and we're going to place our death chamber for the iron golems. For this I like to go up three blocks with my stone bricks in the corners and then fill in the remaining sides with glass. Next thing you're going to want to do is place some signs down in the chamber. Make sure they're one block above the floor. This way there's a two block space for the golems to stand in, but their heads will be in this lava that you're going to place down. If you want, you can place four lava sources down, but one is good enough. You can see it spreads to all the corners. Next, what you're gonna to wanna to do is build out two glass blocks from the center here, all the way around the center chamber. I'll explain exactly why you're going to want to do this later. Now that you got the middle organized, find the center of your trading hall and go ahead and place two doors down. This will mark your entrance and exit to your farm. And I like to frame in door frames. So you can go ahead and put blocks down around here. Next thing you want to do is start framing in your farm. So we're going to place a ring of blocks all the way around. I like to make the corners look like they're actually structural, so put in three blocks here.
And now you're going to want to fill in all those spaces with glass. So far it should look something like this. While you're down here, let's take a look at the middle. You're going to want to place a couple blocks down like so. I would argue that it's kind of a star shape. We'll place them just like so. These are actually building in the spots where your villagers are going to stay for their trades. And I like the look of using some cobblestone stairs just around here. And we'll do the same things in the corners. This will be where the additional villagers are going to live. With that, the inside is pretty well done. So make your way up to the top. And we're going to fill in this entire top. This will be where the water will flow down to push the iron golems. So starting on the edge, work your way to the middle. And once you make it to above the glass ring that you placed earlier, make sure to frame around that. Again, I'll explain why you want to do that later. After you're finished, it should look something like this. Before it gets too dark, make sure you head down below and put some lights down. I recommend using lanterns, just put them up kind of in the corners. Uh, I like to line them up right here and here. And it's really up to you what you decide you want to do. Now that you have some light, go ahead and fill in the rest of the space here with glass. The reason why we have this down is so that iron golems don't spawn down in where the trading hall is. And I like to use glass because it kind of gives the illusion that you're not kind of squished in here because it's a two block tall ceiling and nobody really likes that. Once you're finished with that, head back up top and you can create a ring around the outside of the farm. And then place another block just outside of the ring that you just put on. In the corners, place another four blocks just like so. Now get yourself some stairs and place them all along the outside edge like so. As well, make a little pyramid on those four corners that you just placed so it looks just like that. Once you get that finished, take a temporary block, something easy to break and something you don't really care about like dirt and place it just around this ring like so. Now a little tip for if you're going to do this in survival, make an infinite water pool up here like so. Because we're going to be taking water and putting it in all of these stairs, you can waterlog these staircases like so, and it'll flow towards the middle, and that way iron golems when they spawn will get pushed into the lava. When you're doing this, make sure to leave a space on the very edge stairs, and then you're going to place the water source in the stair that's closest pointing into the middle. Then continue, again leaving a one block gap and going all the way across. Now that you've got this area flooded, we're going to head back down and get ourselves some villagers. Depending on where you get your villagers from, it's pretty likely you're going to be sending them over in a minecart. So the way I found that this works the best is place rails leading in towards where you're going to place them. Your villagers are going to come in a minecart, push them into where they need to be, Place a placeholder block back here and put a slab on top of it because we're going to be putting workstations down later and that slab will prevent them from walking away. Once you have your first villager, go ahead and do that in the rest of the spots all around. You should have a total of 12 villagers. Don't forget to do the corner ones. It's very important that these are just regular villagers who can get a profession. If you have any nitwits, you have to make sure not to use them. To get iron golems to spawn, you need 10 villagers, 20 beds, and 75% of your villagers need to work in that past day. So if you have any nitwits, it's going to interfere with your iron golem spawning. And as well, this is a trading hall, so you can't trade with nitwits, so they're kind of useless. Once you have all your villagers, you can head back up top. And we're going to place four blocks right here. And now we're going to sink our villagers with their beds. This is why... It's important that you're far away from other beds so that you have no problem sinking up these villagers. Make sure when you're placing your beds, it gets orientated this way. And make sure that the green particles come up before you place your next bed. That way you can ensure that your villagers are sinking properly. 
Once you've done the original four like so, you can start over here and place them just in a row. Again, making sure that each one of them syncs with a villager and you get the green particles. After you have 12 beds, it should look something like this. Every other bed after this is going to be just extra. Like I said before, you need 20 beds to be able to spawn iron golems, so we can just fill this area in with remaining beds. After you have your beds placed, it should look something like this. You'll have 20 beds there. Now you can fill in blocks above your beds. Make sure to leave a 2x2 two two hole just above the lava. This isn't a particularly necessary step, but I like to put signs in this hole just to make sure that if you have any problems with your water, it won't accidentally flow onto the lava. Once you have those signs there, get rid of your original water source block and you can destroy all of these temporary blocks so that the water will flow towards the middle. And it should look something like this. At this point, make sure you place all of your temporary blocks above the placeholders for the workstations. You don't need to do such things in the corner. At this point, get yourself some workstations. I'm going to choose lecterns because you're probably going to want librarians in your farm. All you have to do now is place down your workstation and find out which villager it sinks to. In this case, we were pretty lucky. He was right in front of us. So you can break this workstation, break this block right here, and place the workstation down here. Ironically, I found that villager that we first put in here. Make sure that you break the minecart that they're sitting in. I don't think it affects anything, but you probably want your minecart back. Now you're going to do that with every other worker as well. Place your block down, find out who he sinks to, break it, and move it over to where it needs to be. For these corner ones, just place them on the inner corner here. They'll still work and sync with that station. While you wait for iron golems to spawn, you can investigate what kind of trades your villagers have. Check out what they have. In this case, we don't really want projectile protection. So you can break the lectern, he'll desync. You can place another one down, he will resync, and that way he will reset what his trades are. So you can keep doing that until you get the trades that you want. Once you have all your workstations figured out, you can go ahead and remove all of these placeholder blocks. A good sign that your farm is ready to start working is you're going to have cats spawning. Cats spawn in villages, therefore this is a village, which means there's a high likelihood it's been built properly and you're going to get iron golem spawning. Unfortunately, I don't have a solution to deal with all the cats. Chances are they're going to spawn up in the glass, sometimes they'll fall in the lava, sometimes they'll just hang around, but I'm sure you can find a use for cats. Don't forget that they will dispel creepers and make sure that they stay away. The spawn rates of iron golems are still not super OP like they are in Java, so you're going to have to wait a few minutes before iron golems will spawn, but as you can see they definitely do spawn. They're pretty tough so they take a little bit to die in the lava, but there you go. You have yourselves a working iron farm trading hall. You can see here he just spawned up top. The water slowly pushes him down towards the middle and where he will fall into the lava. Because of the cats you're going to get a little bit of string and iron golems draw poppies and iron, so if you need to have any red dye, this is a good farm for that as well, and it will provide you with quite a bit of iron. Um, I'm not a super technical expert with rates and all that, so I don't know how many iron per hour you're gonna get or anything like that. It's a relatively cheap farm. I had the design for this kind of planned around being a starter farm, so it'll kind of get you started with a little bit of iron so that you can start working on some larger scale farms. I'm sure there are much faster and more efficient iron farms than this, but you guys are smart. You should be able to figure it out. That is the end of the episode. I'll put in the description the rough estimate for the amount of blocks that you're going to need for this. But thank you so much for watching. <laughs>